Hi, I'm Rebecca Fuhrer from the Connecticut Historical Society. This is my colleague, Ben Gamel, and we're going to be talking today about how you can use historical objects in your classroom for teaching about history. The object that we're going to start with is an object that you might be able to find at an antique store or at a tag sale, someplace like that. They're readily available objects. We'll also be looking later at some reproduction objects. So a good thing to start with uh, when you're looking at a piece is to think of questions you can ask just by looking at something. What kinds of questions could you ask about a piece to learn more? Well, as I look at this object, and this is one of the advantages of working with objects in the classroom, is that you can have things that students can touch and handle and take apart and turn over. So as I look at this object, I want to know things like, what is it? What was it used for? How was it made? Who made it? Where was it made? What was it used for? Why are there all of these parts? How old is it? What is the Atlantic Company that I see stamped here on the side? Those are the kinds of things I would want to know. Well, as I look at this closely and I turn it around, I can see that I think this is made out of wood, the handle part. It's been painted, but it's definitely worn off in, in parts here. So that part is wood, but the rest of it looks like it's made out of metal. Maybe some sort of painted metal because it's a different color on the inside than on the outside. It seems to have lots of parts. So there's this lid, and the lid has on the top this ring as if something could sit into it. And there's a little tray that lifts out. And then the inside has a large compartment with quite a bit of rust on the bottom because you see the seams here and the rivets that hold on the handle. Looks like it might be a painted metal because the inside is a different color than the outside. And then on the front says stamped Atlantic and the number four, which was probably the name of the company that made it. It's quite worn on the bottom and it has holes almost as if they were punched through on purpose. But it's hard to tell because it is so rusty. these uh, things you've described, what can that tell us about maybe when it was made or who might have made it? You described the metal, um, how it was put together. Well, I think it couldn't have been made too, too long ago if it was made in a factory because there weren't so many factories, at least not in this country, until the middle of the 1800s. So it probably was made after that. And in part, the date probably depends on what it was really used for. So there's this main part that's sort of like a basket with a handle. And then it's got a little insert part that goes like that, as if it was meant to hold something smaller on top. And then there's a lid. And it's got this circle here then I'm not sure what it's used for. It looks like you could put something into that. So what does it look like? Does it remind you of anything? Well, it's definitely a container that's meant to be carried, like that, with a handle. And I think because it's so worn here, that's a good clue that it was used a lot. 
and also because of the rust in the bottom, which probably means that it had some sort of liquid in it at some point. So I don't know what kinds of things you might store in here. Looks a little bit like a sewing basket that I used to have, where you put small things in the top and bigger things in the bottom. But I've never seen a sewing basket made out of metal. Looks the most like the lunch boxes I had when I was a kid, which had little sections and were made out of metal, although might have Snoopy on it. And maybe if that were the case, this is some place where you would put something, your, your cup or a thermos or something like that on the top. Although that would be sort of tippy, so maybe you would put that on the ground if you were picnicking, so you'd have a flat surface. Well, it looks pretty sturdy too. It's probably meant to survive, to last. It's not like your paper bag lunch. Right. Right, you'd use it every day, I think. So there are a lot of things we really can't figure out just by looking at this. Um, where would you go if you needed to, just to start, if you wanted to learn more about this and you've come to a dead end? Um, how can we learn more about this? Well, I think with this particular object, I would use one of the best clues that we have on the side where it says Atlantic and then the number four underneath. And a quick internet search might turn something up. In this case, we would find out pretty quickly that it, the Atlantic Company made lunch boxes for coal miners in the early part of the 1900s and 1910s. And so that gives you a, a good sense of what this object is. Um, you might also be able to bring into your classroom additional types of historical materials, whether it's photographs or of textile mills or people eating lunch outside while they're at work or of um, other kinds of prints or references that talk about people going to do lunch. Um, but there are some things we'll never be able to know, like the name of the person who owned this particular item. I think with objects that are in museums, sometimes the name of the owner has come down with the object, and then you can know something more about them. You might even be able to do research into their own experiences. You might have a diary that goes along with you. You might have a photograph of them going off to work. You could find out where they're from. Absolutely. Learn about their town. Right. Um, in this case, and in the case of most objects that you would buy just at an antique store, you're not going to have a name attached. So I think you have to follow the, the clues that you can find. Mm -hmm.